What's up, everybody? Good morning, or evening, or afternoon, or wherever the hell you're from. Whatever time zone it is, it's early over here, and goddamn, I didn't get any sleep. How you doing, zombie girl? I'm in the same boat. Now, did you did you try to sleep at least, or did you just end up like, nah, not even not even trying? I tried to sleep. I think I fell asleep for like an hour. Ah, <sighs> damn. I kind of had the same boat. Uh, I managed to get like, I think I caught like a 15 minute snooze and then I just had one of those like you wake yourself up moments and you're like, oh cool, I guess I'm not going back to sleep now. Uh, no. Nah. My mind is all a, a flutter last night up until like 3 a.m. And then uh, my alarm went off and then Apollo was like, oh now's a perfect time to be a little butt. Let's go down and chew on the trash can. Okay then, let's do that. <laughs> Throw him out and I was up anyway. He does have a little butt. Yeah. Well, uh, we got some cool things going on for today, of course. It's the BTSL, and you guys should know at this point, we tend to get some pretty fantastic signups for this tournament, and today appears to be no exception to that. Uh, we've also had a lot of players confirming for us. Oh, your webcam just, like, did a the ring thing. That kind of startled me. Um, we've had a lot of players confirm their invites for the map test tournament, so you may have seen us post about that yesterday evening. But if you didn't... We've announced and fully laid out the plans for the uh, $4,000 map test tournament we'll be hosting over the next uh, couple of weeks, which is going to be kind of fun, or rather in a couple of weeks, over a week. But uh, yeah, a lot of the foreign players have accepted most of their invites. We're just waiting on a few to get back to us so we can find replacements, but I think it's going to be pretty good times. Going to have uh, featuring a lot of players in the Korean house. That, that part was already set. That was easy to do. That's eight people. We had to lock down 16 for the other side, though, so we're still... Uh, Still waiting for some replies over there. So make sure you guys get on the team liquid thread and check that out because I think the week of February 18th to February 23rd is going to be good times for StarCraft and we'll get a peek at some of the maps to come for the next season of Ladder. Yeah, yeah. That is what adorable little kitty cat you got over there. So I showed, uh, I, I tweeted about this. I never usually show the host tab or look at the host tab on the dashboard. But I noticed, like, there's been particularly a lot of, like, spam, oh, so-and-so's hosting for zero viewers at the start of our streams, which means people are auto-hosting us. Yeah. And we have 35 different channels auto-hosting us right now. And even though some of those are, like, people who just don't stream, they, they have no viewers and no followers, that's still really cool to me, though, that we have 35 people auto-hosting the stream when we go live. Feels good, man. That is a lot of people. <clears throat> Now, I'm surprised, uh, I, I knew Kelazur was going to come to this, because he got some sleep yesterday during the Base Trade TV <laughs> Korea House 24-hour stream, or whatever you want to call that, on Scarlet stream. Uh, yeah. But I saw Major in the brackets, too, so I guess he's cleaned up his spilled milk and he's ready to fight? Uh, maybe. He did you, still is in there. Did you see that clip? <laughs> of course I saw that clip. I don't see why everyone thought it was so funny, though. So, like, you know, it's I, not I, your I would... fault for bringing it up, but, like... Everyone clipped me that, like, sent me that clip out of so, all 24 hours. So I'm with you on it. It wasn't particularly funny, but what I did particularly enjoy was it was such an innocent thing. Like, he wasn't crushing the milk thing and it popped open and, like, shot all over the place. He was just kind of sipping it like an idiot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that that is funny. But when I, when I first got sent it, I thought the, like, because they were, like, the, the person who sent me just kind of, like, put, like, a, like a O face, you know? Like, O and then, like, colons. And when I first like clicked on it, it was just major like panting heavily. I know. And I that's was like, what, that, when I opened, I'm like, "What is this gonna be, guys? Is he what gonna am have I... like a heart attack? Like, what the fuck's going on here?" And then I, I saw it was the milk thing, which I'd seen live. I didn't need to be clipped. Ooh, we actually have a lot of good matches right now, yo. Uh, <laughs> there's Alive versus Deer. There's Lenok versus Jokshi. Billowy versus Impact. Hero versus Bial. Uh, Sue versus Hush. Uh, take your picks, zombie girl. I'll, I'll get this going. Hey, alrighty then. Um, damn. Okay. Huh. Oh, did M Canning not actually check in? No, but uh, your humming and hawing is getting me a bit paranoid because people are already starting. So, pick one. Huh. Do super says hush. All right. You have hush. to do it. Are you here? Yeah, I can see. That's why I offered because I see your hands are clearly full at the moment. <laughs> it takes me twice as long to do anything. 
Uh, but I am looking through this list and I don't see either of them. Oh, there's Hush. Hi, hi. I'm going to cast your match first. Please allow us to host. All right, Sue versus Hush should be pretty fun. I've actually really been enjoying watching Sue lately. So uh, first map is going to be on Abyssal Reef. I'll go host that up. I got it. That requires no typing. Or okay. You you do that then, girl. You do what you got to do. I was already doing it. It's fine. But of course, we know when Zombie hosts Abyssal Reef, it's going to be on the grounds. No. Right? It's or Abyssal Reef is always the default. <laughs> It'll become Daybreak is what I meant to say. Yeah, okay, that's that's a joke because that was the old one. I tried to catch it on uh, on OBS yesterday after you're like I just can't visualize I, it. I, I really I can't. I, I really and I never did. I never caught it. I like I don't know what it was. <laughs> it never turned to. There was a Bissell Reef first. You know what? It's not a real thing. That's why <laughs> your OBS yeah, can't okay, catch man. what didn't happen. It's just more proof that this is all in your head. <laughs> Whatever, man. It's real. <laughs> Oh, that's a loud way to start the stream. Who was that? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a perfect name. Ah, you scared me. Donated five dollars. Is good eye from Sydney, Australia. Hide from all BTSL. I hope I uh, nailed the accent there. But looks like we'll be waiting for Sue for a couple of minutes, guys. Saying he needs a few minutes. Thank you, Hush, for letting us know. I also had Vigilante 1024 resub for 30 freaking months. This is 30 already. Yeah, Pug Champ. Flotch, of course, uh, reset for 11 months. Says soon. Uh, I'm actually more just surprised that wasn't zest related. And then Taddy GGTV with a new sub. Glad to have you on board. Gana Hall for you four hours ago. Whoa, we weren't even broadcasting four hours ago. Well, you know what? I'll tell you what right now, Flotch. I'm looking at this bracket, right? And if it comes down to it, in round three, if zest fights beyond, we are stopping everything <sighs> and holding that match. And we're going to cast the fuck out of that match. But uh, we, yeah. I think it would have been really easy to grab some of the big names on here, like Zest, like Beyond, but unfortunately, they don't actually have the most enticing matchups to start with. In fact, I would even say Breaking GG and Major is actually a really fun matchup. There's just so many actually great matchups, and this is because we're blessed with this plethora of amazing players. Again, like you go through this list, and you can't read but three names without finding someone you're going to be hyped for. <clears throat> Hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed. Say. You got a hash brown blessed. Hash, oh, I hate hash browns, man. I was. I hate that Ki counter meme. I was thinking Kimmy Schmidt, to be honest with you, right now. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, she does say that. Yeah. Uh people are saying my green screen's not working. Uh no, it seems to be working. It's hanging there, and it's not on fire. <laughs> Although I yeah. guess if you guys want, I can fix that. Pyromania. Ah. Did you know your green screen isn't working? Oh my god. Oh wait, my god. Wait, wait what? Did you know you have a green what? screen? I have a green screen. Uh, looks like nothing to me. Oh my god, oh. I just finished watching Westworld. Have you? Uh, did you watch Westworld? No, you asked me that yesterday. Oh, I can't remember. I get so excited. <laughs> okay, I don't want to talk about spoilers. I mean, the show is not exactly new, and I think at this point you, you're free to talk about spoilers, but just to pay a courtesy to those who still haven't seen it, or if you were like me and you were saving it for like the airplane trips and stuff like that, I just want to say I was blown away. I don't even care about like people saying it was too yeah. complicated or not. The, the If you had just made me listen to any of that soundtrack, I would have watched the show based on the soundtrack alone. It was so good and so well orchestrated and so well cut together with the scenes in the show. I just, I loved it. Every second of it. Okay. I think this still falls under the no spoiler category because I know that it's only recently been like the fucking thing to talk about. Recently for the last couple of months. But the point is everyone is still talking about how much they love it and how much they want to see season two. And oh my God, it was so good. I didn't even know it was a movie uh, until I, I, the first thing I always do is when I complete a video game or I complete like a good series or a movie, like I go back and I'll Google like blank easter eggs like what did i miss when i wasn't yeah. watching it right and i love learning about that sort of stuff uh who the hell is dayun i don't recognize that as sue yet he changed his race and he's grandmaster is that sue with a different profile i mean as long as he's recognizable we can confirm 
uh, if you could, pretty please. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Sue's gonna swap. I, I, because for me, again, we're so used to just having this history of the old Korean betters like try and sneak into the lobby and people be there that shouldn't be. So as soon as I see a name like that join the lobby, red flags start going off. A little mini siren in my head, like wee wee wee, don't let this guy in. But I guess it was just Sue in another account. Yeah, I don't know. It's not like his name or anything. It just <laughs> just another account. Well, that's like, that's the point of a barcode, right? Like you never suspect somebody named Bob to be Zombie Grub. That's a good point. Yeah, that is a good point, man. I'm so disappointed. I uh, I was recognized on ladder on my alt account. Like, Damn, this is what I get, man. So because I had streamed streaming. on Base Trade TV. Yeah, yeah exactly. There, he was like, "Oh my god, I know you!" And I was like, "Please, you don't actually know me." But I didn't say that. I just I didn't say anything because that's what I do on ladder. <laughs> and he was like, "Well, I saw you earlier streaming. I just want to know, that, you know, I like you a lot." Okay, there's a TVT, and I was like, "I hate you." Sorry, <laughs> this changes nothing. <laughs> I know. I actually I get so like. I wish I had a barcode sometimes because for me, when I hop into ladder. By the way, guys, again, Sue's just relogging. He'll be here in a moment. We'll get going with the games. Um, I hate because I'll go in a game after having like four shitty games, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna cheese this guy. Fuck it, win or lose, I'm gonna cheese him just to get this out of my system. Right? I need to work out this anger, and then he'll be like, oh, Rifkin, real Rifkin. Oh, I'm such a big fan of you guys. You guys do such a great thing for Starcraft. Thank you so much for everything you do. You're just such a great person. And I'm like. Oh, buddy, I'm still going to 3 rex you, though, so please don't hate me after we're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude. I think I... Uh, so, that like, when people are like, hey, I'm, like, a fan or whatever, like, I guess they're just trying to... They're just saying it, right? Like, I haven't I haven't met someone who does that and then continues talking and is obviously doing the whole, like, I'm going to distract you because I'm proxying thing. But if they don't do that, if they just start talking, I know for sure they're going to cheese me. Like yesterday I was playing like versus a Protoss and he started he just like three minutes into the game, he was like, Zerg's pretty bad, huh? I really hate him. I was like, Okay, this is clearly a bait. <laughs> and of course it was adept until Stargate. Bullshit. So whatever. I see through your tricks, ladder. Well, we can uh get going whenever there you go. As uh yeah, sorry you guys, it took a little bit of time because Sue was shuffling around his names and all that good stuff, but looks like we are in it to win it. Uh, thank you to Little Musings for the 13 month resubs. This is lucky 13. Hey. 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 Trade TV. Uh -huh. Man, I, uh, before we do these play intros too, I, I found this music channel. I tweeted about it earlier and I, I know I shared it with you already, Zombie Girl, but I spent like a good three hours on their channel today and it was just so good. And I'm like, I'm on this big music kick right now. Is this is. No, not right now, not right now. But it, it's just so weird for me because I've, I've, like between that and Westworld, I'm not, I'm not a music person. I don't own any music. I, I don't listen to any music. I've like aw something's awakened inside of me. <laughs> I guess when you say today, you meant really. Ah, uh, yes. hours ago. Yeah, on account of I haven't slept. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I get you. I got you. Yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed that as well. I am definitely more of a music person than you are, but uh, it was something. It was. It was very relaxed. Like I don't know why it didn't appeal to me in the first place, or I didn't think about it in the first place. Maybe because I just figured I wouldn't like the person's voice. But like that's the perfect background music, but still having fun with Twitch because they also interact with the community. Yeah. Like I'll try and do that with people who are artists because I'll be like, oh, they're good artists, and I'll watch them draw and it'll be relaxing. And then I I alt tab a billion times because I'm millennial and we we do that. I'm not millennial. Am I Gen Y? I actually don't know what I am. Okay, stop talking. Ladies and gentlemen, Next. in the bottom right, we got the Blue Zerg player. It's Sue. I think Gen Y was the year it was the decade before me. In the top left is the Red Protoss. He is Hush. Uh, I'm pretty sure Gen Y was only a couple years ago because that and Pokemon X came at the same time. No. No. See, those were made for both Gen Y and Gen X. That's Pokemon not, fans. That's not, that's not why that was me. Like that. Don't do that. Don't. <laughs> By the way, if it's not clear, Sue did make an abundance of lings, and this has certainly spooked Hush. We've talked about the wall off on this map, and looks like oh, Protoss players are pretty content again. to, yeah, use this kind of cool pseudo wall off. Unfortunately, it still does force pseudo. the Zealot out, and 
Well, another one's on the way. So already Sue's inadvertently doing some pretty nice damage. Yeah. The cool trick is that uh, there's two wall offs to be had. So uh, if he did swap over to the other side of the Abyssal Reef, Zella would just plug that hole the Link just went through, but he misses it. <laughs> it still is okay though. Like he had another Zella on the way. The pylon didn't die, and the Nexus is only slightly delayed. The links get up to the main. They've already killed one pro, but more importantly, again, caused the extra minerals to go towards the zealot, the his brother, I guess. And ah, uh, this didn't exactly massacre Hush. It still really screwed up with his opening. I'm not for sure you have to respond to it, but Hush is a veteran. Hush is actually pretty good. Um, maybe some of you aren't, you know paying attention to the earlier qualifying stages of our tournaments, haven't seen Hush, or just think like, oh, he's on Dust, like how good can he be? Like, that's BM Dust, but it's not exactly like Splice or, or KT or something like that, right? Um, but no, Hush has been doing fairly well for someone you don't really know a lot about, because even before he was on, you know, this, this American team, he was, I think, only on like, he was, he was on CJ maybe, as like a, a B-teamer kind of deal, like only came out once in a while. Um, but no, he's been pretty good. And of course, Sue is Sue. I mean, you guys all know that one. But no, nah, I actually thought the Hush would give him a good run for his money in this matchup. He did try and counter and at least force Sue to make a couple of links. But Sue had made enough queens not to need it. Yeah, he's not he's not sweating any bullets anytime soon. Uh, thank you to... Ah, uh, you scared me for the new sub. Oh, my God. <laughs> actually, I read that, guys. That's exactly what I was going to say. When I read his name, it's the first thing I think of. The, the dude that would hold his eyeballs in his hands or whatever. Yeah, that's definitely the first thing I think of when I, I think Ah, Real Monster. But I didn't really watch the show, so I don't even remember, you know, really what it was about <laughs> or what was happening in it, just that they were monsters. And it was drawn really weird. It's actually that that, that sort of era, true. that and Invader Zim and stuff had this really weird animation well, style to it. Yeah, Rugrats and Ah, Real Monsters both reminded me of Oh, the Rugrats was so ugly. If you go back to it It now, was. No, I, I thought it was ugly when I was out, man. Well, as a kid, I, I remember thinking, like, oh, this isn't the best looking thing. But as an adult now, I'm like, oh, this, like, how did this pass for anything? What the? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, now we have the style of, like, Rick and Morty and Adventure Time, which is all, like, it's very clean, to be honest. Like, there's no, like, frizzy lines type deal because, you know, technology. But it's still very oddly drawn. Rick and Morty is, uh, <laughs> I love every time they get interviewed and they're, they have to answer about the, the drawing style. They're like, look, it's a style, okay? These people aren't style. bad at drawing. They went to college for years for this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. That's that's not much. I love that excuse because I think that everyone recognizes well, it's, it's almost kind of a Speaking of not much, Sue right now doesn't have much of an army. It's not a big thing coming out of Hush, but the thing is the Warp Prism is going to make this possibly snowball. And it, I'm glad Sue has kind of got the roaches out. He's got a handful of links, but he's still droning right now. And oof, I guess he doesn't quite realize this is coming until just this moment. War Prism still hasn't been revealed either. Well, that is fortunate for Hush's attack. Uh, Sue is, of course, getting in there now with an Overseer. But uh, Oh, the splits are going to be super annoying to chase down. They are. They're gonna be. Uh, they're gonna take a long time to, to clean up. We'll see if an actual split to the main base, but this kind of partial split into a full split is yeah. is working out. It's not so bad. Only it gets only Roach without speed. The danger of this though is, well, it's gonna look good for Hush for the moment. If he loses all of these adepts, he's not gonna have much army, and Sue could then counter. There's an immortal coming at home, of course, but one immortal is about all there would be. So it depends on if these adepts get cleaned up and how fast they get cleaned up. 15 drones die, though, and so for Hush, I mean, economically speaking, this was a nice attack. The Warp Prism is still alive. I kind of wish it had unfolded on Warp a little bit sooner and maybe saved even just two adepts so they didn't have to warp in more to harass with. But yeah. he should be fine defensively. I mean, I don't know about this third base. That could be canceled, but with Force Fields and an Immortal, he shouldn't be broken on his natural. Uh, and Sue maybe doesn't even think about pushing out. Unfortunately, while he has Roach Speed, he did not go for Speed Lings, which contributed to the difficulty of the depths being cleaned up, and that would be his reinforcement if he tried to attack in. Yeah, just dart across the map with really fast units. Um, once again, the depths come in. I don't know if they'll focus fire a couple of drones. It looks like they're just going to be kind of useless, sadly, for the time being. Yeah, not, not too great there. We have Charge already on the way. Which is a uh, Ooh, that's nice. 
you know, we've seen a lot of maybe Blink follow-ups. Uh, I don't think we've seen a Resident Evil Glaive follow-up all in in a while. It's actually been a lot of the Blink follow-ups. And I think Hush was one of the DVPs uh -oh. that uh -oh. we saw almost something but Blink follow-ups. But I, I can't quite remember. That is dangerously low and it's now going to be stuck in a corner forever. Okay, Rifkin. Oh, we're doing bets. We haven't done this for a while. <laughs> Zombie, do you think this warp prism gets out of here alive or dead? I thought you were going to do that thing where you just said it yourself. No, no, just You're go tired with this. of giving me the answer. Um, I think it dies. Okay, well, reversal. Now you think it's alive? I think it's dead. What? This is... That's exactly what we were doing before. No, see, I, I'm I'm taking your answer. Whatever you were going to say, I was going to take. I said I was going to die, didn't I? Yeah, so now I'm taking that, and you have to go with alive. Oh, no, that isn't, that's not how that works. So yeah, just don't. This, is, this is like Uno. I've, I've got a reversal card, okay? No, it's not. Pick up two while you're at it. By reverse the way, this, this is actually reverse, far reverse. more interesting to talk about. We have a storm coming out of Hush. And uh, whatever for the Warp Prism for the time being, I actually really like the storm add-on to this. But this isn't a lot of Ravagers, it's not a lot of Banelings, and it's certainly no Hydra list just yet. So the storm usage here is going to be questionable. I mean, it's blanket damage, it's AoE damage, so it's always going to be good if it hits enough units. But I don't know if the gas investment to the Templar would be worth it at all against what is looking to be pu almost almost purely Roach. Well, that's what it looks like it's going to be, but uh, he saw the Hydra list in? Uh, let's see if you start turning to the Lurker den. I don't think he saw that. No, he didn't even see the Hydra den at all, so this is just guesstimations at a hush. Uh, and I mean, it's not bad. It, yeah, you're right. Like It's not bad to be prepared for this, but having gone down through Robotech, I really thought this would have gone through more like disruptors or something. Uh, either way, I, the Immortal Countout is really good. That's going to help deal a lot of damage. The Charge Lots... like so That's another reason I find Storm a little bit interesting here, right? Because Charge Lots would do a pretty good job of taking on Ravagers and, more importantly, Hydras on their own. The Storm, of course, helps all of that, but again, nothing of this is really conducive to what is largely a, a lot of roaches. I, I don't know. Like, Splash is always good, and any form of Splash is good. I mean, sure, they don't one-shot them like a Disruptor would, but they're a little easier to control. And they morph into Argons, too, <laughs> as opposed to just dying in the front lines. Like, Charge Storm is still going to work against Mass Roach if you get enough Storms and enough Zealots, but no, it's definitely not the fleshy underside of a Mass Hydra army. Like, Ling Hydra, maybe even. Like, that would just be obliterated, but it's it's still an okay composition. That Warp Prism got out alive, so I guess your reversal really tricked you. <laughs> this game, it's not over yet. <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty sure most of these have been like whether it gets out just in general. <laughs> and, like, alive the entire game. Uh, these charge shots, of course, get on top of the roaches pretty quickly. Some nice slice and dice action as they pull back to the mineral line where there is a spine crawler, interestingly enough, to help cover this. Queen almost goes down. Of course, we have the big push out in the front doors and hush. His army supply is not looking so great in comparison to that of Sue's, but he does have upgrades going for him. Plus, two is already done. I'm still alive. Uh, yeah, yeah, plus two is pretty good. Lurkers are on the way. I don't, <laughs> I don't know about attacking you with only two. Well, it doesn't even add for much. Okay, not down to one. But I think there wasn't really any detection for this. He was really primarily relying on storms to kill them and kind yeah, of worked a bit. True. Okay, here's a scarier number of lurkers, especially without that. And, well, the observers up here too, though, which is really important. We can watch this Crystal Palace hit some of the Templar. Maybe oh, it barely dodges them out, but. This army, the Lurker Corp- wow, the Lurker Corpses are huge flying up, but the Immortals have had their barriers pop. It's kind of hard to push through this. He's got to stay away from the Lurkers. Yeah, unfortunately, loses that Archon. But he's on four bases. Another charge in of, uh, warp in of charge lots. There we go. Uh, as well as maybe another Immortal that pops out, and he should be able to clean up the, the army before it really starts to threaten his base. Zealot warp in from that Warp Prism that's still alive. Uh, can do effective damage against these Hydras reinforcing. Yeah. Zealot's left unchecked can seriously get out of hand very quickly, so it's a good thing Sue had his whole army respond to this. They're not something you want to underestimate. Back on the other side of the map, though, I'm really worried. Like, this Ling army is going to get on top of this, and there's not much to deal with said Lings. This is where you really wish you had more of those storms ready to go, but these Templar are about 5, 10 energy short. Well, that kind of sucks, and he just uses Warpians, obviously, on the offensive, and that might not have been worth it. The Lings are taken care of by just the Immortals running back, but so is all of his cannons that he was trying to get to buy more time. If he had storms uh, ready to go yeah. for that attack, it would have been very different. Like, one storm could have washed off all those lings. Instead, he had to back away with those immortals. A lot of the barriers are on cooldown because of it. And loses the Nexus on top of it. This is really bad for Hush. But really good if you're a Zerg fan right now. Because Sue's pushing hard. And he's still got a lot of Hydras. 
a lot of his big expensive units like the lurkers too. I mean, the roaches have done what they're meant to do when they soak the hits. Also, dodging the storms, okay. Um, you know, there's, there's only one more storm left. The high templars are still alive, so given time, maybe they get a couple more. But he's running out of splash. A uh, pretty good storm right there, but the immortals aren't taking care of the lurkers fast enough, so those charge logs don't actually get those last hits on a lot of these hydras. This might just be it. Even if he cleans up this army, he's gonna lose a good chunk of his. Like his archons are all gone. Obviously, the zealots are still mineral investments. Only four mortals live, where I think he's made like seven total. Uh, now producing two mortals at a time, his army will look better against the uh, lurkers, but he might not have enough money to get anything to deal with the lings or the hydras. Well, as we wait for the final battle, perhaps to commence. New sub, Ah, uh, you scared me. He says, "What are some of the benefits for being a subscriber?" Uh, I think the number one is you're saving esports one day at a time with Base Grade TV. But secondly, you do get replay packs for things we do. We don't release them publicly. We only ever release them to subscribers. <laughs> yep, an emotes. But this is looking like uh, pretty bad. You know, the Immortals could take care of the Lurkers, mm, but if they're all dead, they though. That, yeah, before they did that, all their, you know, the Zealots and the High Templars and the Archons all died to them, so. GG. All right, Sue takes the first game in the series. This also gives Hush map pick, but this is a best of three, so at least one more game to go. Uh, I will say Sue looked very solid in that game, though. I don't, I don't particularly find anything wrong with what Hush did, but Sue just really, he took, a, he took damage from the adepts, but he didn't take a lot of damage from the adepts, and I think that's what was really key there, because that's something that can get out of hand, especially when you got someone like Hush who's. That's not like one clump of adepts. Like he's doing three different sets. He's trying to take three different bases at the same time. So Sue's splitting, chasing, all with slow roaches. Like again, if he had lost too much there, I think that game could have spiraled just as easily out of hand for Hush. That is true. I think uh, Abyssal Reef's going to be a bit tough for Perdosses to just get to that mid to late game stage against Zerg because we know, like, whether it's tanks or liberators or technically colossus i suppose uh anything that's good in a choke it's gonna be good on abyssal reef and those lurkers uh there's only two real spots on abyssal reef where hush could have gotten a concave and uh, that would either require him taking another base not the fourth that he took or being super aggressive uh still waiting on his map okay new kirk yeah for those who are unfamiliar with the base trade star league Wow. Uh, we have one preset map for each round, and then it's loser's pick afterwards. So they can pick any of the maps. So, Bjorn lost to Nice. Huh. I didn't expect. 2 1 at that, yeah. That's a bit surprising. That makes me really want to cast Nice, though, and see what he's up to if uh, Bracket comes down to him later. Yeah. Sure. Well, it might. we might. I mean, it might still be a good matchup against Zest. By the way, Bjorn has. He won the monthly finals, so he had an auto invite for this month's monthly finals, and he won last week's weekly finals. So Bjorn is like super invited to this month's monthly finals. He's like, unless he chooses not to show up, he's definitely in. Yeah. All right, they're both ready. Let's do this. All right, Newkirk. We'll see what this one looks like. Uh, looking at the bracket, not a lot of other super crazy upsets. Got a couple walkovers here and there, too. But uh, good to see Ryung and Patience and others sticking it out. You can see the map looks like, you know, a two-player map with uh, bottom left, bottom right positions and bases to be taken in the middle if you really, really feel like it. What? Because <laughs> you said, we'll see what this looks like. Oh, it's a joke. Oh, <laughs> you got me. That was a, <laughs> that's a knee slapper there. <laughs> Ah, ah, ah. You went kind of Canadian. I really did, because I didn't there. know how to respond to that otherwise. <laughs> I'm actually wearing, you can't see my shirt, I'm wearing my proud Canadian shirt right now. <laughs> so it works out. But uh, I like the colors of my proud national flag. In the bottom right, spawning red, it's Hush. Uh, in the bottom left, Harry Pool, it is the blue Zerg Sue. And someone just made a It reference, which I forget. I. You did see your well. You know, you know about the clown, right? Like Tim Curry, and at least you know what it is. Yeah, it yeah. is okay. So, you know, he says they all float, they all float down here, and it's really creepy. If you could just go ahead and put like a, a scare, like a um, 
jump scare picture of its face in the Abyssal Reef map intro, I think that'd be perfect. Everyone's just jamming along to the Little Mermaid song, feeling so good about themselves, and then BAM! Clown with spiky teeth. Yo, I would love to do that for like a face. like a Halloween thing, right? Like for if we have <laughs> Okay, so this will reap has <laughs> until October. Got it. If only there's other scary holidays. Similar to last game, several links come out early on, and that's gonna keep Hush a little bit spooked. It's something actually where if if, if you're going really good, if you went Nexus first or anything like that, you actually straight up die to this. We've seen like really awful four minute games and such. I think like two and a half minutes is the record, but uh, regardless, this shouldn't get too bad. He's actually almost got a full surround on the probe. He might just ignore it to go for the wall a little bit quicker, but there's already a zealot out, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yeah, he wants to try to see if the zealot's installed for whatever reason. I think more often we've seen games lose just because, you know, it's not that they don't have anything to fight with, necessarily, it's just like a pylon goes down and <laughs> they don't have anything to fight with in the future, because uh, everything's been unpowered. But uh, two zealots will be enough. And the probes can go ahead and uh, clog the hole here. So this is dealt with. But it does, again, mess up Hush's build a little bit. Uh, I do like that he goes for double double gateway, though. Last game, he tried some counter pressure, but then he didn't really want to commit seeing three queens. Like, that was enough to hold him off. But with two gateways, a nuclear precinct, uh, I think it, Sue at least will have to think, you know, a little bit more about his defenses because it's... Uh, I guess you gotta leave the zealot there. But two zealots and two adepts would have been really scary for someone who, of course, is only on lings and, and queens. Well, as uh, Hush marches across the map to answer this question really quick, in chat being asked, uh, do we ever do a Q&A about our lives or anything like that? And We've done a couple of AMAs here and there. We actually have uh, one of our mega fundraiser goals is we're going to do a joint giant like question and answer AMA, whatever you want to call it, session with the folks in the team house or in the team house in the training house. So if you guys get questions for them or for us, that would be the time to get your questions in. Fo show. Fo show. Wow, well, you said that weird. Canadian weird or? Yeah, like just regular weird. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Uh, Hush is still producing from the two gateways. I think he really does not want Sue to, to, to get away with only defending with Queens. Uh, that would be the ideal situation for Sue and he should be Punished for it, of course, in the defending Protoss's mind for doing that early Nexus. This is something that Sue sees. He just checked back at the gateways and still feels confident with mostly just queens against. But it is a bit of a worry. Like, those adepts do get in the mineral line at any point, this... which they can barely not make it in the main base, and it'd be tough. Well, if he's paying attention, he may have noticed that Sue also skipped Ling speed again, so just not quite being able to mm -hmm. keep up with. Uh, the shades and of course the adepts running around. Uh, Resonating Glaives was a follow up, but Sue got a pretty good glimpse of this. He also saw the additional gateways coming down, so he knows precisely like four gateways in a robo, like pretty standard so far. Nothing too weird, nothing too all in. Yeah, the additional gateway for uh, Resonating Glaives is like a little suspicious. His four gateways are usually only used for Dark Shrine builds, but. Uh... I think uh, most Zergs are accustomed to, if not dealing with an Adept all in, like seven gateways straight up, they're definitely uh, accustomed to dealing with tiny surprise attacks that are, you know, three gateways constantly warping in, or four gateways constantly warping in, you know, what, what have you. But I, Hush really, like, he, he didn't really get the damage he wanted where Sue. Sue made, like, eight lanes and still felt very comfortable with only his queens. and. Maybe the more depths he gets, the more chances Sue just messes up in terms of just only Roach defense. Because he was close to losing too much in the last game, with only his Roach just trying to, to follow him around. This game, it is going to be an additional four gateways, so it isn't all in. <laughs> and uh, while his Roaches will have speed, they'll only be Roaches. Well, for now, I'm not worried about this just yet. Last time we saw this going on, Sue, was, he threw in a couple of drones maybe a bit earlier than he should have, or maybe they were perfectly timed. Regardless though, this time we don't have drones being made. There's not going to be a chance to greed or complacency here. A lot of roaches, a lot of lings, and roach speed finishing up shortly. Uh, these adepts, I think they got a split. Okay, well he's not. So, if the, really bad, if the adepts actually. don't... 
So if they don't split, the roaches are pretty damn effective, especially with the speed kicking in here. They won't have a problem chasing them down. If they split, there's a chance they miss split their roaches. There's a chance the mineral line, you know, focus fire on the drones. You still get 20 drones, but right now, uh, just six and, you know, soon not having to worry about a third base also being attacked is... Like, Hush, Hush is realizing this all is failing. It's a little bit unfortunate. You know, this base well, being creeped up. There's no chance to sneak in a third nexus. There's no tech really behind it. His army supply is just dwindling. And while Sue might not be running away with drones, he is just not taking any damage from this, really. Uh, yeah, and that's the real problem with what Sue did, is that... Uh, it's one big warp in. <laughs> the fast roach speed helps, for sure, but also that lack of third base meant... Even if Hush did split between main and natural, it still shouldn't have been too difficult for Sue to also split. Oh well. GG. Sue so takes the series 2-0 and will advance on the brackets. So very nicely done. Uh, he will fight the winner of Hero or Beol, which is actually a really good other series that we could have caught. Um, I kind of hope Hero beats that, but Beol has just been so incredibly good lately. I can't describe it better than that. Just plain and simple, he's been very good. Okay, <laughs> that's a good enough uh, description. Who do we want to go to? Uh, so, well, Silky's still fighting Super. If we end up waiting, we could just catch the winner versus Zest. Uh, oh, alternative. I was like, what are you talking about? He's facing Keen. What? Oh. There's Flipside Silky and his X Team Silky. <laughs> and then all we need is Soul Key to really make this confusing, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll, we'll see uh, if that ends up being the case or not. Well, uh, what we'll do is we'll go to our first commercial break of the day. Uh, thank you guys for watching and joining us bright and early in the morning. Quick reminder that because of us having to move some things around for the map contest for Blizzard, uh, we're going to have the BTSL happening again tomorrow. It's not uh, normally scheduled for that time, obviously, but we have to kind of spread the gap. So tomorrow's going to be the third weekly, a.k.a. the third qualifier. And then the monthly finals will actually happen like the second day of March or something like that. But, uh, looks like uh, Super just went offline, so maybe Silky won. I don't know. We'll find out when we get back, guys. See you in two minutes.